The Gospel of Matthew offers a captivating account of Jesus' birth, a story etched in the hearts of many. This narrative, rich in symbolism and theological depth, introduces Jesus as the anticipated Messiah, fulfilling ancient prophecies. Matthew's account intricately weaves together elements of the Old Testament, presenting Jesus as the fulfillment of Jewish hopes and expectations. Central to this narrative is the virgin birth, a miraculous event that underscores Jesus' divine nature. However, verses 22 and 23 in Matthew 1, which mention the prophecy of Emmanuel, were likely added by scribes as a commentary. This is evident as the context reveals that Joseph named the child Jesus, not Mary, and the child was never called Emmanuel ever. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25 recounts the circumstances surrounding Jesus' conception. Joseph, betrothed to Mary, discovers she is pregnant. An angel appears to Joseph explaining that the child is conceived by the Holy Spirit. The angel cites Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 stating, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. This prophecy, according to the angel, finds its fulfillment in Jesus. However, a closer examination reveals a disconnect between Matthew's use of Isaiah and the original context of the prophecy. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 emerges from a specific historical context. Isaiah, a prophet in the 8th century BCE, delivers a message to King Ahaz of Judah. The kingdom faces a military threat and Ahaz is gripped by fear. Isaiah offers a sign from God proclaiming, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the young woman shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This sign, rooted in the immediate crisis, reassures Ahaz of God's protection and the eventual defeat of his enemies. Section 4. The Weight of a Word, Virgin versus Young Woman. A crucial difference emerges when comparing Matthew's citation of Isaiah 7.14 with the original Hebrew text. Matthew employs the Greek word parthenos, which unequivocally means virgin. However, Isaiah uses the Hebrew word alma, which simply means young woman and carries no inherent implication of virginity. This distinction is pivotal, as it underscores a shift in interpretation from the original Hebrew text to the Greek translation used by Matthew. Section 5. The original Hebrew unveiling the true meaning of Isaiah 7.14. Understanding the original Hebrew deepens our comprehension of Isaiah's message. The prophecy delivered within a specific historical crisis offers a sign to King Ahaz. A young woman will give birth to a son named Emmanuel. This sign, grounded in the immediate future, reassures Ahaz of God's deliverance. The prophecy finds its fulfillment within the historical context of Isaiah's time, not in a distant future event, the birth of a child symbolizes hope and the continuity of the Davidic line. Section 6, the significance of textual variations understanding the evolution of scripture. The discrepancies between Matthew's use of Isaiah 7:14 and the original Hebrew text offer a glimpse into the complex process of textual transmission and interpretation. In the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph names the child Yeshua, while in the book of the prophet Isaiah, a young woman names her child Emmanuel. Matthew, writing for a Christian audience familiar with the Greek Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, interprets Isaiah's prophecy through the lens of Jesus' birth. The angel says that the name of Jesus points to his mission to save his people from sin, not all people. Recognizing these variations encourages a deeper engagement with biblical texts, prompting us to consider the historical and cultural contexts that shape our understanding of Scripture. 